right. So uh, I had one person say pen it was about pentagons. I had somebody else say polygons, which really is a good one. Yeah? Yeah. Um, however many vertices there are, that's how many triangles we Yeah, we're all, we're all getting kind of closer, but that's not what the whole target was really. What, what was our goal? Center dot. Uh, no, not center dot. Yep. Finding the area of polygons. Finding the area of these different shapes. Like I could come up here and I could draw a crazy shape here, guys. Do you think that there's an area formula somewhere in the world for that particular shape? Yeah, yeah. yeah there might be. I, I, don't, I have no idea. I don't know what it is. But do you guys think that I could find the area of that? Yeah. Yes. And I could do that. I could find the area of that by doing what? Uh, what? Formula. Well, no, no. Because then I would have to learn, every time I drew something different up here, slightly different, Something like that. I'm gonna have to learn a new formula. I don't want to learn. I don't want to memorize formulas. What can I do? Hey, we shut that, please. What's up, guys? All right. So, uh, what what can I do here to find the area of that that crazy looking shape? Go ahead. Absolutely. Breaking it down into small shapes. Does anybody know what word I kept using in the video? Starts with D. Decom decomposing. decomposing, that's what it is. When you take it and you decompose it, you're breaking it into smaller shapes. So for instance, this one, I could take this thing here. I could say, yeah, I'm going to break it right there. I could break it right there. I could cut it up there. I could cut it there. I could cut it there. And then what, what, what? One, two, three, four, five. What six shapes do I have there? I, but we're just going to call them rectangles, parallelograms. We have six of them. If I'm able... Is everybody in the room able to find the area of a, of a parallelogram? Yes. Sure. I would hope. That's learning target one. Base times height. Okay? So if you can do base times height, all I have to do go through here is figure out base times height on all these. And then once I get the area of each individual section, then what am I going to do? I'm going to add them up, and that's going to be my area. Now, isn't that a lot better than memorizing another formula? Yeah. Yes, it is. Mandy, pay attention. Here, for instance, what shape do we, what, this is obviously a polygon, right? Mm -hmm. This is some sort of closed shape. I don't know what name you want to call it. It's got six sides, so it's hexagon, I guess. Huh? A beetle. A beetle. Quit trying to get on the video. All right, so, what, what could I do then? What, what could I do to this thing that would allow me to find the area of it without actually trying to figure out a formula for it, because I don't want to have to do that. Luke, decompose. decompose it. OK, what am I going to decompose it into? What am I, where am I going to do that at? Go ahead, uh, Kylie. Yeah, I think we can all see if I took scissors out right here and I cut it right down that line right there, I would now have a rectangle. And I know it's a rectangle because it has 90 degree angles, right? And then I can see this is a trapezoid because obviously, do you, do you see the two parallel sides? Yeah. Sure. Absolutely, I could. Let's say you forgot about the trapezoid formula. Could I now take this and cut this here? Yeah. Two triangles. Two triangles. So I could do one big rectangle, one small rectangle, a, rect a triangle and a triangle. It doesn't matter how you do it. You guys all understand that? Yeah. That's what we're going to be working on today. Now, that's where it can get a little bit tricky. So I'm just going to go back to the original one here. I'm going to say this is a trap. This is a uh, a rectangle to trapezoid. Now it's pretty easy. What's the base and the height of my rectangle here, dude? Oh, 16, 14. 16 times 14. So whatever that is, I don't care. I think it's 288, but I don't remember. Okay. Now here I have a trapezoid. So I know I need to do one half times the height times the sum of the bases, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two. So how do I know which is this a base right here? Yeah. So I know that's one of them. We're, this is base two right here, right? Yep. What length is that? 14. Yeah, because, again, you've got to use all your definitions of parallelograms. When, when I ask you guys what a parallelogram is, you guys generally say what? What do you guys call a parallelogram when I say it? I need you with me. When I say what is a parallelogram, what do you say? Yeah. Um, a shape with all equal sides or parallel sides. Okay, not, yeah, uh, opposite sides. Yeah, and congruent. That's the whole thing. Whenever I draw a rectangle, it doesn't matter where I draw it. If I take it and draw a rectangle, I know for a fact that if I were to measure that line and that line right there, the opposite sides, they're not only parallel, but they are the same exact length. Put the calculator down. Okay? Everybody got that? Everybody understand that? Yeah. Okay? So, that's all good. 
it's going to be 8 plus 14 because I know this is 14 right here because I know this is 14. So I have all my information except for what? Uh, your height, your height. I do not have a height for that. So we know that the height is technically the distance between the two bases, so the two train tracks. How far apart are they oh. is what, what I need to figure out. Now this is where it can be a little bit challenging. This is where de decomposing becomes hard. You know, if I gave you, if I gave you everything, if I would have given you this, there's no work to even be done. There's nothing. You just, all you're literally doing is cutting it and then going. Where it becomes challenging is actually trying to figure out those missing pieces. How am I going to figure this out? How am I going to figure out what this length of that, or the height is of that trapezoid? A Andrea. Yeah, absolutely, guys. See, because she knows that they measured for her right from there to there, from the very left side of this figure to the very right side to right there is 32 feet, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if I know that this from here to here is 16, then don't I know from here to here has to be this, whatever this is, which we know is 16, plus that, what does it have to equal? 32. 32. 32. So technically, aren't I doing 32 minus 16? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so that's what we have to do. You are being given the whole, you're going to subtract out a part, and you're going to be getting the other part. And just understand that this length right here, this dotted line, doesn't matter how where I draw it, as long as it's a right angle going to the other base, it's going to be the same length, right everybody? Yeah. So I know that would be 16. Everybody see how I did that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, now, I'm going to go down here real quick. This, what is this shape right here? Triangle. I mean... It's a trapezoid, yeah. Let's let's go ahead and do it. I'm gonna pick some real easy numbers here just to help save a little bit of time. But here we have um, there it is, and I'm gonna say this is three meters, something like that. Okay. All right. So there's my trapezoid. Do I have enough information to find the area of that trapezoid? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I know my formula is one half times the height times the sum of the bases, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna plug in what I know. One half times four, or sorry, times three times 4 plus 9, and that is going to give 19. me 19.5 meters squared. Now that's all great. I mean, that's your three points. One, two, and three. Everybody agree with that? Yeah. All good? Okay. Now, are you going to remember that formula in six months, do you think? Yes. You think so, really? Yeah. yeah I will. I, okay. Really? No. I'll come and I'll come to your room. And hey, I'll, I'll tell you this right now. Yeah. Every year, guys, when I teach this, because I literally do trapezoids one time a year, even when I teach it, I have to look back into my notes and see, make sure I know what the formula is. You guys will not remember that formula. You might remember what it kind of is. You'll remember it's something about the bases. But if I went to the seventh grade students right now, the ones I had in class, and I asked them what is the area of a trapezoid, they most of them would not remember that formula, and you guys won't either. Because I, will. It's not, I said most of you. <coughs> okay? I said most of you. I'm not saying everybody. Probably most of you won't. Now, you need to know it for my class, for this chapter, but here's the thing. Even though my students in seventh grade don't remember the formula, I guarantee they'd be able to find the area of this figure. Do you know how? Go another way. By decomposing the trapezoid. I can decompose it. What can I decompose that thing into? Triangles. Two triangles. I can, I can take my, my scissors out, and I can actually say, you know what? I'm going to cut this thing right there, and I'm going to cut this thing right there. Everybody agree? Yeah. What, what three shapes did I just create here, Lesnar? Uh, two, a rectangle and two triangles. A rectangle and two triangles. So I've already taken the liberty of drawing these for you. I've already, so they're already there. Okay. Now, I need to have dimensions, though, right, guys? Now, I know these are right triangles, which means they have a right angle, because whenever I cut it, I would never cut it on an angle. I always cut it 90 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm cutting it. So we've got to figure out a base and a height. Now, when I look here, I'm going to ask you guys to do this here in a minute, and your clickers, okay? I want to know, I need to figure out the base and the height of all, all my pieces, and this is where it becomes kind of tricky. So first thing I'm going to ask you guys is I would like to know what that length is right there. And I'm going to have you put it in your clicker as soon as I open it. Watch. Okay, so I'm going to end this. I'm going to pull it up. Now we have a lot more answers than what I said. Now, I'll just look at the two biggest bars here. Four and five. And uh, there was the next four, biggest would be... Four and five. Four and five. I'm 
Sorry, four and nine. Four and nine, sorry. Now, I will tell you right now the correct answer is four. Okay? Let's talk about why. So, this is, I did this for a reason. I mean, I knew there'd be a lot of you missed this. It's, this is the issue. This is what makes this a bit challenging. Okay? So, please just watch. So, the answer is four. Only ten of you got it correct. Okay? So, when I'm looking at this, I said I could understand where people would put nine on this, or I could see where people would put four. And like I said, four is the right answer. Now, what you guys got to realize is if I were actually measuring, what is nine representing? Again, if I did this as A, B, C, D, what is nine representing, Steve-O? A to D. So nine is representing all the way from the point of that triangle to the other point of the other triangle. Is that going to be the base length of my rectangle? No. No. Right? Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. Now, if I would have asked everybody in the room, well, actually, I'll do it now. Now, I would like you guys to tell me the length of the red. Go. What is the length of the red? And this is the red up here, too. What is the length of the red side? Well, that's fine. What is the length of the red side? Don't talk. See how we did? So the majority of you put four. So those, the majority of you, 22 of you, actually were just listening to me because I just gave you the answer. This is where you've got to use your clues when it comes to your, your characteristics of what a rectangle is. Guys, first of all, if I just said to you, what is the distance from right here? Find a color that I can actually see. The distance from right there to right there. That's all I'm asking. Guys, that's given to you. Four meters. It's right there in front of you. Whereas this 9 is representing an entirely different distance. So if you know this is 4, don't you know that the red and green have to be the same length, guys? Yeah. They have to be because we know that rectangles have the characteristic that says opposite sides are both parallel and congruent. Right? Yep. All right. Now we've got to figure out a height of this rectangle. How am I going to figure that out? So we know these are all right angles because you know, that's the only way we're going to cut it with a 90 degree angle. So what's the height of this of this rectangle, Doobie? Oh. Oh, three. three. Guys, look, if I were to take this and I, and I were to draw a line from there to there, that's a certain length. Does everybody agree? Yeah. Oh. If I could take, I could take that line all the way down through here, would it be the same length all the way across? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely it would. So then I know that my height is three. And do I have enough information to find the area of this now? Yeah. Okay, so could I go ahead and do area equals base times height? Yeah. Which, yes, you do need to write, and you're going to get 12 meters squared. Everybody great? Yeah. All right, now we're on to the triangles. Who can tell me what the height of the triangle is, this triangle over here? Who can tell me that? Um, Alex? Three. Three meters, yeah. Once again, same thing I just showed you. This distance is going to be the same as this, which is the same as this. It's just the distance between the two bases of the trapezoid. Okay. So we know that's going to be three. We know this is going to be three. Now, what's the last piece of information that we need to gather in order to be able to find the area of these triangles? The base. We need to figure out the base. So we got to figure out that, and we got to figure out that. Is it possible? No. No. Oh, yeah. It kind of is. It kind of isn't. Now, I can tell you right now, unless we measure, there's no way to be able to tell the exact length of those two triangles. This is where this gets kind of hard. There's no way to be able to tell the exact length. But let me ask you guys a question. I'll highlight it in, uh, in blue right here. What does that length right there, that length, and that length, and that length, what do those two lengths have to add up to? No. No, 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 no five. No. They have to add up to five. And here is why. Because this, guys, listen. We know that the distance from right here to right here is nine meters. Does everybody agree? Yeah. So if I know that this part right, oops, if I know that from right here to right here is what? Isn't that four? Yeah. So how many inches do I or meters do I have there and there to add up? Two point five. 
Yeah, you could split them evenly. You don't have to, though. You could honestly just do it as two meters here, and you could do three meters here. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. That doesn't matter because you're, you're accounting for it, and that's really hard to understand. But it doesn't matter. Okay? So you know this is going to be two meters here. You could know this would be three meters. Have I accounted for the whole base? Is three plus four plus two going to give us nine? Yes. Yes, it is. So now I'm ready to find the area of the triangle. So area equals one-half base times height. So one-half times two times three is going to give me three meters squared. Okay? And then over here, I'm going to do one-half times base times height, and that's going to be one-half times three times three. That's going to be 4.5 meters squared. So what do I have to do? What's the last step that I have to do here in order to find the area of this trapezoid? Um, Lesnar? I need to take all these areas, area of a triangle, area of a rectangle, the area of the other triangle, and I need to add them together. And when I add all those together, I get 19.5 meters squared. Is that what we said it had to equal? Yes. You guys all understand that? Yes. That's hard. The whole base, split in the basis thing is really hard to understand. But I just want you to know that even if you forget that trapezoid formula, you can still find the area because I told you really rectangle or parallelograms and triangles are really the only two you need to know. Everybody understand that? Okay, go ahead and look at number one up here. Okay, now what shape is that? What shape is that, Lucy? It is a pentagon, but we I want you to write this. This is something called a regular pentagon. Go ahead and write that. Now a pentagon itself has can you, can you write this, please? Uh, pencil. What, well, whose problem is that? Okay, it's a, a regular pentagon. So, let me help you understand what a regular pentagon is. Okay? A pentagon can be any five-sided figure, correct? Right? Okay. That's a pentagon. What a regular pentagon is, is when you know all the side lengths are the exact same. So when I, when, if I know that from right here to right here, if that's 17.5, what is this right here, guys? 17.5. And what is this? 17. All of them are 17.5, right? That's kind of the whole point to this. That's, otherwise, you wouldn't be able to use this method, okay? The method I'm going to show you. But because it's a regular, and it says it right there, by the way, regular pentagon, then you know you can do it this way. Does anybody in here know what the area formula for a pentagon is? Anybody know? Do you think there's one out there in the world somewhere? Yeah. Could be. I don't know. I don't care. Okay, there could be a hexagon. I do not want you guys to memorize formulas. That's what I want you to stay away from. Do not memorize formulas except for the three that we have to for this chapter, but then really after this chapter, only the two. Parallelogram triangles. That's really all you have to know to do a lot of these, okay, for these, comp these composite figures, okay? There's probably a formula. We could probably look it up. It's irrelevant. What shape do you see in there? Yes. I see a triangle. I see five of them. Do you agree that every one of those triangles is the exact same triangle? Yes. They, it's, it's called an equivalent triangle. They are congruent in every way, shape, or form. So do you guys know how to find the area of a triangle? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So what we're going to do is we are going to find the area of one triangle. So let's, we're going to do that together what? What? Do we times it by four? I can't hear you. Never. No, say it one more time, please. Never. So do you multiply by four? No. Okay. So right there, we're going to find the area of what I've highlighted in green. So again, we're going to go over, of course, we have to write the formula, so you should be doing that with me. Okay. And I know that the base of this particular triangle that I want to find the area of is going to be 17.5. Okay. And then I know my height is 12. Now, they could have written it in here like this, right on this little dotted line. They could have. But isn't that going to be the same length? If I get out my little tool again and I, and I do that, one of those, and I were to grab that and bring it over, isn't that the same length? Yeah. So, you know, it, they're just trying to show it so it's not so clustered in there. They don't want it to be, they want it to have a little bit of space. So we're going to go ahead and calculate this. We're going to get 105 centimeters squared. Now, is that the answer to the question? No. That isn't the because now what if they would have given you this triangle? They would have said, "Yep, here's your triangle, 17.5. It has a height of 12. Is that the area of that triangle, guys?" Yes. yes. 
Yes, it is. But we're not finding the area of the triangle. We have to, we're being asked to find the, the area of the pentagon. The area of the pentagon. So if we know that all these triangles are equivalent to one another, and we know that each one has an area of 105, think about it. I won't write labels on there because I don't know if i got enough space. Aren't, don't all these have an area of 105? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Could you go through there and actually find, could you actually do this formula for every one of those triangles? Yeah. Sure, and it would give you 105 every time. Is that unnecessary? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So what are we going to do, Thomas? Multiply by 5. We're going to take the 105, the area of 1, and we're going to multiply it by 5, and that's going to give us 525 centimeters so squared. Everybody see how I did that? Does that make sense? Yes. Biggest mistake. Guys, when you, this, this, this one question just like this will be on the test. I think we got one or two of them. Okay, did you, are you writing this? Okay. Um, the biggest mistake I see students make, they get to this step and they put that as their answer. Happens every single year. And I usually, I think I might give them a half point because they're, they're doing the, they're getting the thinking right. They just forgot one very important step. I didn't just give you a triangle. I gave you five triangles. Think of it that way. Everybody got that? Okay. So um, those, those I think you guys feel like are pretty easy. Now let's skip down here. Did everybody get all that written down? Yeah. Let's skip down here to number four. Okay. Now I'm going to give you some strategies here. Now can anybody name what shape that is? No. No, no it's, just, it's just a polygon. It's, it's a shape. We don't know what it is. I, there could be a formula somewhere in the world for it. I don't know. We could probably make our own formula. Okay, we could probably do that. But we've got to figure out a way to cut this thing up, decompose it into shapes that we can work with. Okay, now I prefer to always try to cut it up. I see people working ahead of me instead of waiting. So just be patient. I prefer to always de decompose into, into rectangles and triangles if possible. Now I know some of you are already doing this as I'm looking around. Some of you are cutting here and you're creating a rectangle and a trapezoid. Now that's fine, but my thing is, I just feel like that trapezoid formula, it's, it, it, can, it can throw you a little bit. And I think there's just such a better way to do this. What would be the better way to cut this, Brennan? Um, do it right by the triangle. Yeah, yeah I mean, that, that may, I, I think it's a lot easier doing base times height and doing one half times base times height than it is to do the trapezoid formula. Do you guys agree with that? Okay, mm -hmm. now, one thing that I like to do, I, I went ahead and I redrew this rectangle. It's pretty close, right? Close enough. So I'm going to redraw it here and the triangle if I can find it. There it is. Ooh. Okay. And the triangle. And I'm going to bring both those things up here. Now basically, that's, imagine if I actually did really take scissors there and actually did cut it off. You guys see what I did there? Yeah. Okay. Now, here's my rectangle. I know that I need to find a base and a height for this thing. I've got to figure it out. Now this is where this, just leaving it here can be a little bit confusing at times. Whereas if you actually redraw them like this, which I, I like it when people do that, I think it helps you to visualize it, you can really see it. So when I, I like to get a highlighter and really say, okay, everything you see in yellow is going to be the same length, right? Right? Everything you see in green right now, is that going to be the same length? Okay. Okay, and, and that's where I start and I say, okay, what, what is my length? I'll ask you guys this and then I'll stop it. I want to know what my base of this rectangle is going to be. Put it in your clicker, go. Okay, so I'm going to pull this up. I asked what was the length of the yellow or what, what, you, what we would call the base of that rectangle. And like I expected, I expected the majority of you to select four, which is the correct answer. And then I expected a handful of you to select seven, just like we talked about with the trapezoid. So let's go over it now. I know it's hard. I'm not sure where 17 came from. I think maybe it was mistyped, possibly. But look, seven is representing this distance from here to here. Right, guys? Is that, did I highlight the whole thing yellow? No. No. If this right here is four, guys, doesn't the definition of a rectangle tell us that the opposite side must also be four, guys? Yeah. So if you don't redraw it like this, you could just put four inches there like that. Right? Yeah. Do I have enough, or I need to now figure out the height of this rectangle. What's going to be the height of the rectangle? <coughs> this is our base, so what's the height? Uh, 
It's going to be 5. Do I have enough information to find the area of it now? Yes, I do. Base times height. That's going to end up giving me 20 inches squared. Notice how I wrote the formula. Everybody see how I wrote the formula? You have to do it every time. It's good practice. Okay, now let's go on to the triangle. Okay, let's go to this, this triangle here. Okay, and we're going we're gonna to just think about what information we need. We need to know the base and the height of it, correct? Yep. Okay, so can anybody tell me what the base is? So I'll, I'll do this in red. So we've got to figure out what this length right here is. Now this is where it gets challenging. But that's where, see how I'm using colors to help you visualize it a little bit? Let's go uh, Haley. It's going to be three inches. Now, some people would have still thought seven. Some people would have thought four. But you've got to realize, if I know that from right here to right here is four, guys, then this, whatever this is here, doesn't it have to be add to four and you'd have to get seven? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. So I just did seven minus four. That's how we got three there. Now we've got to figure out, figure out a height. I'll do that in, in this blue color. Okay, so we got to figure out this height. How am I going to do that now? Um, Corey? Absolutely. I know that this entire distance here is 5. If I know that part of it right there, it comes back to this stuff, right, guys? Whole minus part equals part. If I know the whole distance is 5 and I know part of it is 3, then that means the other part must be 2 because the two parts have to add up to 5. Is everybody seeing how I'm doing this? Now can I find the area of this? Hello? Yes. One half base times height. It's going to be one half times two times three, which is going to give us three inches squared. So I know my area of this is three inches squared. What's the last step that you have to do now? You have to add them together. And there you go. We feeling pretty good about this? You really got to understand the definition of a rectangle. I know that this is five, and I know that that whole thing is five. Okay, so it's a lot of subtraction. You're subtracting out the part of one side to get the other side. You guys understand what I mean? Whole minus part equals part.